All right, welcome back to uh, Generational Gains with myself, Greg Herlean, and my son, my oldest son, Carson Herlean. And uh, today in particular, uh, we wanted to go over something that we get, uh, I think we both get the questions about some different asset classes or different types of <clears throat> accounts and vehicles, uh, specifics of, of, of holding money. And, uh, you know, we've already talked about in the past, you know, money in general, budgeting, your why, creating wealth. Uh, but today we want to talk about, in particular, uh, kind of from both of our industries, uh, the infinite banking concept, the IBC, as far as when to use it, how to set it up, uh, and, and who, who should be using it, and, and the, kind of the process as far as infinite banking policies, uh, that, that concept. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm going to go over a little bit, and we're going to have some questions and stuff about the IRAs, about what type of re retirement accounts and or non-qualified accounts, what that even means. Yeah. Uh, just because we get feel that. And so if, so if you're listening to this and you think you might know everything about retirement accounts or IBC, I, I, I bet you don't, first of all. <laughs> uh, and number two, hopefully you learned something from today as far as what types of accounts uh, might be best for you or your spouse or your kid. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you want to start? Yeah, and, and we don't know everything either. I feel like we, we know a good amount about this stuff, but we don't know everything by all means. So if you guys have questions that we're not answering, reach out to us via our comments or DMs and ask us those questions. So, I mean, I, and, and I'll preface this well. That's a really valid point. Uh, I will say that, you know, Carson helps, uh, you tell me, how many people every month? 50 to yeah. 70 people every month or more? Yeah, I would say that I've probably helped 1,500 people or more build and set up their own banking systems with infinite banking. And, so, and you've helped thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe, of people set up the right retirement accounts for them and use it for their investment strategies. That's right. So we're not, uh, well, I would say we're experts in the space, uh, not he, he in his space and me and mine. Uh, but I still learn something new almost every month or yeah. at least every week yeah. where someone said, okay, what's going on with this kind of retirement account and this asset and this rules change with the IRS and yeah. contributions have changed. So it's always a learning thing. So yeah. let's, let's jump into, you want to start with the IBC first? Well, I almost feel like the perfect place to start is the difference between qualified money and non-qualified money. So from my perspective, there's, that's the two types of money, qualified or non-qualified. That's it. Now, within that sphere, there's two different places that your money can be. In the non-qualified space, I think of that as your checking account, your savings account, money you spend, life insurance premiums, expenses, investments sometimes even. And then in the qualified space, that's any account you have that is a retirement account. It could be uh, um, all kinds of stuff. I don't, don't want to list them. All kinds stuff. of stuff. Yep. Um, and so those are th accounts you can't usually touch until you're 59 and a half without paying a penalty. Uh, there are some tax deferred plans, some tax free plans. Uh, usually you have a, an employer sponsored plan that's within that as well with the 401ks. So there's two different spaces your money can be in. And from there, then there's a different better, best and okay place to keep your money within those two realms. So that's where I want to start. Yeah. So do you want to do so, better best with the non-qualified? Because you focus more on non-qualified money. Yeah. A non-qualified would be more of using an IBC policy or a bank, et cetera. And you'll talk about that. Why don't you, why yeah. don't you share like the non-qualified types of things? Uh, and you share the qualified. share more on the qualified or retirement accounts. So, so because they're different, and we actually were, were kind of talking before this about different ways you can use and invest your money, what's more efficient. So we can talk about that too. But in my opinion, you have a budget right? You have income, expenses, and net income, even whether it's personally or within a business. And then that net income has to go somewhere. If it were me, I'm trying to find a place that can be as safe, as protected, and growing as possible. So for everyone, that's different. Some people like different assets, different investments than others. But I want to keep every single one of those dollars in a safe place. And then I also want to have it growing. So what I mean by that is, when with infinite banking, this is the in, infinite banking concept is what I'm talking about. And this concept is basically a, uh, a, a concept used to protect and grow your wealth by using a specially designed whole life insurance policy as the foundational asset of where your money goes first. 
where it goes first. And that's the important part. Simple definition. So there's net income. Where's that net income gonna go? Into your foundational asset first, the specially designed life insurance policy. Once it's there, now it's gonna be growing tax-free forever. It's gonna have a death benefit because it's life insurance. It's going to have uh, tax growth or tax uh, free growth forever and liquidity. So it's liquid when it's designed correctly. You can take money right back out once you put it in and use it. So now your money goes in this asset first. Then from there, it can go anywhere. If you have big purchases like cars you need to make, a home you wanna purchase, or investments, you wanna buy real estate, you wanna go in the stock market, you wanna buy crypto, all of those different things can go through your policy. And while it's through your policy, it's gonna be in that place, in that investment, or in that purchase, and at the same time it's in that place, it's your dollars are still in the whole life policy with the insurance company, growing, compounding, tax-free, while your funds are also out and you're using them. It's a very safe and, and protected place to keep your money. Now, that's in the non-qualified space. We can get into all the investments you can do from there, but in my opinion, the best place to keep your money is life insurance, especially design life insurance though. Yeah, I, I think, I think Carson explained that way better than I could. Uh, and I, we both use these policies. Uh, I use it as a foundational place for my non-qualified money. And I put the money in and I'm able to take majority of it out uh, to, to buy cars and instead of borrowing from a bank or to yeah. pay the, a tax bill or mm -hmm. an expense, et cetera. Uh, and, then I, I put it, and then I put the money, I replenish the money back into my account, into my foundational insurance policy. I think one thing that's cool as well about uh, life insurance, because uh, I think it gets a bad rep, uh, but the type of policies that you're doing uh, and that you've taught me to do as well, you and Chris have taught me to do, yeah, uh, is is insurance companies. I don't think most people realize this. They are the 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 most wealthy and and uh, safe companies uh, in the world. Yeah, uh, they've been around for most of them over a hundred years, and yeah. and banks and governments borrow from insurance companies. Uh, the ratios, as far as uh, deposits go and, and money's there, is much better in an insurance company than it is a bank. Yeah, and so so as far as safety goes, I think it is one of the absolute <laughs> safest places. Yeah, to foundationally put your non qualified money. We're talking about I think in a part two series about where specifically you and I are investing and using that money yeah. that goes into our insurance policies. Uh, but right now, uh, hopefully that's, you know, scenario or example, Carson, to share with you is helpful because we get this question a lot. And, and, and after I talk about retirement accounts, we should also talk about the other question is, well, which one should I do first or, yeah. or which one's better? Yeah. We'll get to that. Um, so, me well, I mean, I can expand on that too, because you brought up a good point. Don't take our word for this. Like, it's not like, life insurance, we're just trying to sell you life insurance. It's like, this is a concept that's been around for a long time. If you read Robert Kiyosaki's book, Second Chance, he talks all about this. If you read Tony Robbins' book, he writes all about this concept. These wealthy people do this concept. Joe Biden, when he became president three, four years ago, his tax returns came out public. And what did he have? He had millions of dollars in mass mutual, in life insurance companies. So why are these wealthy people doing it? Why are the wealthy families doing it? And not the average consumer. We, we can be doing that too. So it's not like this is a new thing we're trying to sell. This is like a, a concept that's been around for a long time that's helped a lot of people preserve and grow their wealth. Well, I think that's the, that's the thing that most people don't get and understand is traditionally when people hear whole life or life insurance, they, they immediately think about the benefit of for death these yeah. kind of policies are meant for life, to use them while you're alive. There's just an additional benefit to your estate or family if you die, but yeah. that's not why you're doing it. Yeah. And I think once people start understanding that and how money works and how you use these policies, uh, it, comes, it becomes clear. But if you have that mindset like I did when I first started, you know, when I first bought life insurance, when I had kids, it was like, oh, I'm buying it for death if I were to die. Yeah. And, and that is not <clears throat> the purpose of, of this kind of policy. Yeah. I think it's important though, too, like actually this week, two days ago, uh, I had one of my clients pass away. So that's the second time that's happened in the past six months. So her husband died. She, she called me out of the blue 
She was my client's wife, never talked to her in my life. And she passed away or he passed away. Mm. Um, and it was an emotional conversation because I could tell like the, the hardships that she's going through just by what she was saying and how she was saying it, her emotion and her voice. But I was, I, I felt good because I was probably the only good news she got all week. Her, she's going to get over 500 grand from the death benefit because he was putting a thousand bucks a month in a policy he was using to pay off his car. That's it. That's it. <laughs> he was putting his money in the right place first. And yes, it was beneficial for him while he was alive, but it's huge for his family now that he's gone. And so, yes, it's a good place to store your non-qualified money, but the death benefit is really important too. Yeah. And, and if you have a, a large death benefit, that's, you know, it's, it's great too, but it, it, that's not the point you do it's it. A, it's a really good benefit for yeah. sure. Okay. So we can talk about the investments you can do from that and the, the, the back and forth of qualified versus non-qualified, but can you explain from the average person when they contribute to a 401k or they have a Roth IRA they contribute to, what that means, how much they should be putting in it, what, what that all looks like? Well, first look, uh, things have changed now uh, for almost all Americans. It used to be um, for like my parents and most people you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, uh, used to work for a company, one company forever, and you'd get a pension and you wouldn't have to put even money in there. Yeah. You'd get some kind of retirement, monthly um, retirement uh, plan after you retire. Yeah. Uh, that's gone away. Uh, it, it is far and few between. Uh, of course, the government has things like that where you yeah. put in the years, teachers do, uh, different agencies. Uh, Unions. But, but most people, yeah. most Americans do not have that. And so what they do have is qualified plans. Most companies or corporations where you might be working have a 401k plan. We have one for our company. I'm still surprised by how few people use the 401k. Uh, the 401k is one of the best places to start your retirement account. And the reason why I say that is because mm. almost all 401k plans have some kind of additional yeah. money that the employer mm -hmm. puts in that matches. And so matches dollars that you put in. So if you have a 401k plan, the first thing you should do is find out how much your employer matches. So let's say they say we match, uh, we'll give you 5% on every dollar for the up to $5,000. Mm -hmm. My recommendation is put in the $5,000. Yeah. You don't need to put a penny more than that, but whatever portion they either match or give a percentage of, or give some kind of free money on, put that dollar amount in. That's one of the best ways. It's free, it's, it's kind of it's free, free money. money. Yeah. But it's also, I, I think you should look at it as an expense. Uh, because it's a cost, meaning it's, it's less money in your pocket because it's going to come out of your paycheck, but you're building up and preparing for, you know, uh, hopefully a, a decent sized retirement account. And so, most people who don't have a good savings plan or good budget, it forces them to save. So yeah. it's good in that way too. Yeah. So first and foremost, if you have a 401k plan from your employer, uh, use it. Uh, number two, uh, if you qualify, and again, that's something that my staff and team can help you with, or you can just Google, uh, qualify meaning uh, if you don't make too much money, yeah. uh, you can also set up a Roth account. And a Roth is, is particularly phenomenal because it, is, it doesn't give you a tax right off today, uh, but it is after tax dollars that, that you get paid and you put into an account. Uh, you can put $6,500 in there for most, for the most part and that per year, per year. Uh, and you can put that in and then you can invest those funds. And then everything that it does inside of that account, wherever you invest it, all those gains grow tax free. Mm -hmm. And then they come out when you go take it out. Let's say you started at his age, yep. 21, uh, $6,000 a year. And that's all he does every single year. Let's say he does that. And at the end of 30 years, his $6,000 compounded making 10, 12, 13% per year will be millions of dollars. Uh, and that's cool about that is when he's 60 years old, he can pull all that out and pay nothing in taxes. Yep. So the Roth is one of the best types of retirement qualified accounts that you can set up. So if you qualify, you should do it. Well, that's like, uh, cause like you said, it progressed from pensions to company sponsored plans. The Roth IRA, isn't that the newest one? Isn't it like 30 years old? It came uh, out in the 90s, I, I thought, I, right? I don't know how old the, I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure it's the newest one. I don't know, you stumped me. I don't know, I don't know uh, how long 
uh, they've been out, but but it is probably the newest one. Yeah, and and but it's not a company sponsored thing, and so it's yeah. individual. Most likely, you can set one up, uh, and if you can't, because maybe you make too much money, uh, or or there's just certain small little things that might make it so you cannot have a a Roth, we can help you set up different types of accounts. There's called a simple retirement plan, a SEP, um, a uh, traditional IRA. These so people have TSPs, HS, HSP, HSAs, HSAs, yeah. So uh, cover all. I mean, there's there's lots of different types of retirement plans. These are all qualified plans. So really, and rather than going through all of the rules and and the, the requirements yeah. of how much you can contribute, just know that most likely, ninety nine percent of you do qualify to create some kind of retirement account. Yeah. Now, the other thing I'll say is, is a third of America already has a retirement account. You mm -hmm. might have an old 401k. This is a qualified account with, a, with your previous employer. That also can be put into a self-directed IRA account, which we're not going to go over too much today. Um, but all the rules that apply with your retirement account that you currently have or that you want to have, a Roth, a simple, a 401k, the, all those rules that you might have currently wherever you're at, if you move over to a self-directed account and mm -hmm. it's a Roth, traditional, whatever, it's the exact same rules, same contribution rules, same mm -hmm. uh, distribution rules. Uh, all the rules are the same. The only difference is where you can invest your funds. So that's really a difference between you know some of the retirement accounts out there. Roth recommended, 401k is absolutely recommended, uh, especially if your employer is matching. Uh, and then I you know I recommend either a SEP or a simple um, or a traditional account as well, depending upon how much money you make and how much money you're trying to put away. The more money you're trying to put away into a retirement account um, uh, will tell you kind of which type of retirement accounts for you. That being said, uh, as always, uh, you know, definitely talk to your CPA. Your CPA knows your finances better than we do. Yeah. And so uh, you can have this conversation with them, but, but definitely have the conversation with them. Uh, you don't want to wait five more years. People listen to me and uh, I can't tell you how many times they're like, oh, I, I saw you two years ago. I still got to do that thing that you talked about. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and then it'll seem like a third time and a fourth time. And then finally they do it. And they're like, oh, I should have done it like five years ago when I talked to you the first time. I think that is one of the biggest mistakes is, is, is waiting. Is when you are t to the time value of money is incredible. Uh, and look, you, you double your money, right? The 72 rule. So if you're making 16%, let's say, and, and divided that by, by 72, I think that's like four, four and a half years. You, if you're making 16% in that example, every four and a half years, you can be doubling your money. Your 100 can go to 200. Mm -hmm. and, and sadly, that four years is what it takes some people to hear this message yeah. four years before they start doing it, Yeah, uh, which is tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's a good point. And he brought up self-directed retirement accounts because I think overarching, whether you have money in qualified or non-qualified places, you want to have control over your money. You want to know where it's going, what, what's happening, if there's fees charged on places, if there's not, what you're making in it, what the volatility is, the risk. The more control you have and the more understanding you have about where your money's at, the better it's going to end up being for you. So the reason you'd set up a self-directed is because you have a 401k that's old that you just forgot about, that you have no idea what's happening with it. You probably all, all only know what the... You probably get your annual statement in the mail and that's all you know about it. So... Those accounts, that's why you want to roll it over to a self-directed 401k because then you can control it and you can invest it in what you want. So also when it comes to the non-qualified money and infinite banking, you're running your money into a whole life policy, which then you control. Both places you want to have control over your money. So th that's one thing I would add to that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think when... You know, Carson was 16 years old or even 18 years old. He ever thought he'd be sitting here with me talking about money like this. I don't, I, I don't think that, I mean, you shouldn't have, by the way, you're <laughs> yeah, in the well, middle of yeah. sports, <laughs> but I think it's interesting now, uh, just a few years later, he's, he's preaching. Uh, and I'll say that in a, in a yeah. know, kind of fun way, but yeah. it's also real way about having control of your money. And so uh, it's really funny that, that we have parallel paths as far as our message goes to the people we're talking to and sharing with. Your message is, and I'm just going to reiterate it, you, I think you said it very well, but I want to say it a little bit differently, is your message is fundamentally 
take back control of your money. Mm -hmm. Own, be your own bank. Mm -hmm. Unlock the money from a bank, a Bank of America. Finance though, things uh -huh. yourself. And, yep. and control your money, which is what you teach mm -hmm. and preach and help people do. Mm -hmm. I do it uh, the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and for decades now, I've taught people to take back control of the retirement accounts. Yeah, Don't have someone else making those decisions uh, unless you really need them. And, yeah. and, and, and by the way, our message is not for everybody. Those that are more hands-on, those that are, are, are taking action and, and very much engaged in their finances and are concentrated on their investments, uh, I think this applies to. Uh, but not not for everybody. So I, I do I do think it's interesting. Our our messages are the same. Yeah. But they're completely different vehicles. So I think let, let's kind of just wrap up on that as far as the the different vehicles. He talked about non qualified money, yeah. IBC insurance policies. I talked about retirement plans, taking back control uh, with qualified funds. Uh, the number one question I get is, well, which one's better? Yeah. So Carson, what should I do? Which one's better? <laughs> the answer for this is always, it depends on your situation. Yeah. Always. Because if you do have a company sponsored 401k, you do have an old 401k, 100% keep in the qualified space. But if you don't, and then it's going to depend on what you want to invest in or what debts you have or what, what your overarching long-term goal is. If you want to buy a house, you can't buy a house, your own primary residence through an IRA. So you're not going to. That's right. So it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, I, I agree. And, and surprisingly enough, probably for you as well, I would say that if you're starting from scratch and you have neither of these accounts, I actually recommend, and recommend building your foundation first, doing an IBC policy first. Uh, that would be my recommendation if you're starting from scratch. Because uh, you need to build that foundation. You need to build that bank for non -conflict. It almost becomes an emergency fund, a savings account. All, all in one. And, and then you can go build on your retirement. And you can actually take, put that money in. Let's say you put in X amount of dollars, $10,000 mm -hmm. into an IBC policy. Mm -hmm. You actually can then take, a, take money from yep. that account and, and take $5,000 and create a self-directed Roth account. So you can yeah. do, you can do both. Yeah. And so so I, I do want to say though, because this is a common question I am asked, which one's better? It just it really does depend upon where you're at. So if you're starting from scratch and have neither, I'd start with that, uh, and then create a retirement account. If you already have a retirement account, my answer for you is don't cash it out. I see some people getting so excited about IBC and they're like they like, they cash out the retirement plans, they yeah. pay their taxes and penalties, and and then fund it. That's not the right message. Uh, what you should do is move those funds to a self-directed account and start using unlocking your money so you can invest that retirement funds in investments that you like, know, and trust. And, and then uh, separately create an IBC policy. So, so I actually have an interesting thought on that. For most situations, I would agree. But a lot of people who come to me that want to set up policies have debt. So if they have 30K of credit card debt, they pay a thousand bucks a month for it. Thousand bucks a month on thirty grand is a strong return. That's what twelve thousand a year, forty-five percent on your money a year. You're not making that in an IRA. Some of those people, I actually probably would tell them if you have thirty in an old four hundred one k, pull it out, pay off all your debt. You're gonna make way more, a thousand bucks a month, than keeping it in an IRA and investing, making ten dollars a month. Like you're better off to pay off your debt. So here's why I disagree. Yeah. Uh, you use the right words for me to, to be able to disagree with you. Okay. Which is, you said 401k. Yeah. A 401k is the only type of retirement account that you can borrow up to 50%. Fair. And so if you have a $30,000 401k, uh, you can borrow up to $15,000, mm -hmm. no penalties or taxes, and pay off most of the debt or yeah. half of the debt. Yeah. And it's a loan. So you still have to pay it back, but at a yeah. lower, way lower rate than a credit card. Yeah. And so if you have a 401k, that's what I would say. Now, if you don't, there still are some other things you can do. And I don't want to go too deep in this because we need to wrap up this session, but uh, I would disagree with you for one other reason, which is if you are an entrepreneur yeah. and you're a business owner, you own your own business, you can create an uh, LLC, if you don't already have one, and create a 401k. So if you have a traditional IRA, 
you can tr roll that over, that traditional IRA, into a new 401k plan uh -huh. that's sponsored by your company. Mm -hmm. And now you can get access to $50,000 or 50% of your account in a loan. And you couldn't do it otherwise if it's a traditional IRA. So you're saying run it into a company, which would mean that you can pay a match so you can get double as much into it. Uh, no, what I'm saying is if you have an IRA right now, you yeah. can't borrow against it. Oh, you're saying to move it to a... If, and if you own a business, you can uh, create a 401k and you uh, can convert your IRA into your into your 401k. Mm. And now once it's a 401k, you can borrow. Then you can borrow. Out. So why can't, can you not roll a traditional IRA into a 401k? You can if you are a business owner, sole proprietor. Yes, uh. but if you are employed by someone else. Oh, that makes sense. You can't roll it into employees. it. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, very good question. That's a good point. And, uh, yeah. but, but look, every situation is different. So look, yeah. reach out to us, contact us, message us. Um, we'd love to field questions and or do a phone call with you. So uh, when it comes to IBC, Carson is very knowledgeable in this. Uh, so definitely message him, get with him. He is one of the best at this. It helps. I've seen him help people that are 18 years old, all the way up to 65, 70, I think. Yeah. And you're, you help all age age brackets. So definitely get with Carson. And if you're looking more about talking about retirement accounts and what's the right one for you, reach out to me. You know, DM us, message us on social media, and we'll yeah. get back to you. I love it. We always end our, our uh, podcast with sweet, sour, and service. And so I'll go first today. Um, my sweet for the week is... Well, actually, I'll start with my sour because last episode we talked about our suite was going to a Golden Knights uh, hockey game. Sour is the Golden Knights suck right now, and they lost three straight. They lost they the game we suck. went to. They just lost. But it's annoying. So that's been my sour. They play again tomorrow, and we'll play tonight. Or tonight, yeah, they'll play tonight, and we'll see how that goes. Um, but my sweet for the week um, has been having more more leads coming in. I feel like the past couple weeks I've had less, less traction and it's starting to pick back up. So that's been nice. Um, and service for the week is Anna, it, my wife, Anna is out of town. She's in Utah with her mom at an event yesterday and today and tomorrow. So I've been home alone for a couple days and I've been able to clean the whole house while she's gone and kind of put stuff together, organize the stuff I'm supposed to be working on. So Love it. it's been good. That's a great service. You're yeah. gonna get lots of brownie points for that. Yeah. Uh, my my real quick is uh, my suite was this week. We did go to the nice game together, even though the loss. It was really fun for the family. That was a, a great time. My yeah. Uh, my my sour uh, is uh, I don't have any sours actually this week. Good. Everything's been really good. Uh, my service mm -hmm. is. Um, I, I don't know if you can call it a service, but I planned a pretty hot date last night and Jess and I were able to go and, and have a really nice time last night. Just her and I left the baby and uh, had a great dinner and, and quality conversation for a couple hours last night. And I don't know if it's a service, but maybe it's part of my suite, but uh, That's great. it was a great night. So thanks for listening in today and uh, uh, li listen up to our next one. Uh, it's really going to be about what specific investments he and I are personally doing. You might want to hear this one. We're going to talk about numbers and what's working, what's not working. It's going to be a good one. So mm -hmm. we'll see you in the next one.